B-Sides on air backstage at Warp Tour 2018, Mountain View, California. We are joined by Lauren of Sharp Tooth. Hi. It is a very claustrophobic uh, 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 in here, I want to say. A little, little uh, warm. A little warm. A little warm. It's warm in here, warm out. But this is your first Warp Tour. First ever Warp Tour. This is crazy. I would have assumed this is like your 10th. No, uh, like not only have we never been on a warp tour, we've never even played a single date. We've never even played like a local stage or a local warp tour. So this is we're the noobs for sure. Yeah. So well, you snuck in just in time. Yeah, right. And then we're on the whole thing. So we're like, OK, uh, guess we better learn how to do this really okay. quickly. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about your experience, I guess, with warp tour as a fan then. I'm sure sure. that you've attended quite a many. Oh, my gosh. I've been going to Warp Tour since 2005, and it's pretty much a yearly like tradition for me. And usually I'll go to multiple because I'll either have friends who are in bands or have bands that I like really want to see. Like so, I go to a bunch of them. And yeah, who was the one that really appealed to you? Where you were like, I gotta go. 2005. 2000. Oh my God, everybody. That year was nuts. It was Story of the Year, Fall Out Boy, Atreyu. Like those were like my three favorite bands that year. I was like, Oh my God. They're there. Uh, Avenged Sevenfold played, uh, Real Big Fish played, Offspring played, and like, yeah, like fast forward to now, like, Real Big Fish are friends of mine, <laughs> and we were just talking about makeshift showers together. It's like, what? what is life? Yeah, right? <laughs> I think if people listen to Clever Girl, it's, wow, very A, cohesive. Uh, there's, yeah. there's a, I think there's a message there somewhere. Oh. Oh, yes. I think there's definitely a through line in the album. Um, I mean, the first track is all about like basically finding your place and identity in heavy music, and then the last song ties into so many of those elements, like lyrically as well. And all the in between content um, just comes from my personal experiences as a queer Jewish woman existing in the world, and so which are things that are very personal to me, but I'm sure a lot of other queer people or women are, will also be able to relate to those experiences as well. And we must note that in between, of course, is a track called F U Donald Trump. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> and, yes. I, and I'm sure that's not a, uh, oh, yeah. th there, there, there's no, uh, uh, th that's not a, a code or a metaphor or. No, we lyrically and content wise, we are very, very upfront about what we're about. And even in our live show, like I take the time between songs to tell people like this next song is about XYZ because you know even if somebody's never heard us before doesn't understand a word I'm screaming because it is screaming um, I want them to know who we are what we're about we don't we don't mince words at all <laughs> now now ever since the election in 2016 mm -hmm. I've actually lamented about how there weren't enough politically charged and politically influenced uh, informed music in the mainstream. Yeah. Uh, you guys are part of this smaller pocket, I would probably say, yeah, right? Sure. It, did you set out, out with the band to do this, or did it kind of evolve that way after the election? It Well, I joined Sharp Tooth in the winter of 2014. It was actually, we started writing songs like right around the time where there was a lot of uh, police brutality was coming into the news. Finally, people were starting to address these things. And that's an issue I picked up on right away. I was like, this is unacceptable. How are, how are people who are trying to go about their daily lives getting gunned down in the streets by the people who are supposed to serve and protect us? So that informed a lot of my writing for our EP. And it basically like, we, I never necessarily sought out to be a political band. I just am an inherently political person. So I think it was always kind of like fated to be that way. Um, Is that because you grew up around Baltimore? Or? Oh yeah. I mean, I went to the, the Freddie Gray like protests and yeah, so I've grown up in a super diverse community. Uh, a lot of Jewish people in Baltimore, a lot of black people in Baltimore. It's very artsy and eccentric and close-knit community but yeah it, yeah growing up surrounded by people who don't look like you normalizes the fact that there's gonna be experiences that aren't anything like mine so when you hear people start talking about that like in their experience it's not it's not an inherent it's not something I want to push back against I think that's a problem that we have in our culture is that there's so many people who live in that kind of bubble 
um, people who might think like, oh, like my life is hard, therefore I can't be privileged. And it's like, no, that's not what that means. It just means that your life is less hard than maybe somebody else's would be who doesn't have those privileges. So yeah, I learned to recognize a lot of those privileges like fairly quickly. Like thankfully my parents impressed that upon us. Like, like you guys are very privileged. You need to know that. <laughs> so thanks mom and dad. Right. Well, that, I'm so happy for you. Thank you. Uh, congrats on the recognition so and everything and look forward to the set. Heck yeah. Awesome. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Awesome. It's uh, Lauren. She's from Sharp Tooth. The album is called Clever Girl and you're watching B-Sides On Air.